Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, sneaking in here one time, hello. Sam Healy, welcome back, partners. Today we're reviewing Merlin Completely from Stefan Feld. Wrong theme, yeah. And sure. Michael. Reinach. Now, Stefan Feld is known for many, many, many games. Yes. He's actually one of your favorite designers. You're talking about Michael Reinach right now. You said Stefan Feld. Yes. Yes, I said Stefan Feld. He's one of your favorite designers. You talk about how much of his, many of his games you like. No, I don't. Definitely. You like Notre Dame. Yeah. You like Bruges. Yeah. You, whatever. Okay, so you I like... like a, I like maybe a third of his games. You like okay, more, of, more of his games than I do. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. And me. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Then Michael yes. Reinach, though. You are the Feldite here. All right, so Feld is really popular these days. Feldian What's Reinach mind. known for? What, what, what game would you pop in your mind if you said his name? Pillars of the Earth. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's probably... He's got a bunch of games, but Pillars of the Earth is the best known. Oh, it's coming back, too. And the new one. But anyway. I enjoy his stuff. Call Anytime I see his name on a box, I know he's, he's the guy who took over from Michael Schott. When Michael Schott just started making the same game over and over and over and over <laughs> again. Because I used okay. to love his stuff. And Michael Reinach is doing great Euro type stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's engaging and still has that streamlined feel that Schott used to give me. Yeah. All right. So you're interested because of the designers. You're interested yes. because of theme. Theme. That is correct. And I just like uh, that it had a lot of cool components. So <laughs> I'm, I'm more shallow. Let's take a look. So the game has this giant rondelle in the middle of it. This is the uh, the round table, the Knights of the Round Table, and each player is going to start with some resources. You're going to draw a starting tile, and this is going to show where your guy starts. For example, this shows me that my guy, let's say I'm the yellow player, would start on the purple chair. I'm also going to get a purple flag. I'm also going to get a gray cube, a blue shield, and I put an influence marker on the black area. So I take that stuff, the gray flag, and the blue shield, or I'm sorry, the gray cube and the blue shield, and I'm gonna put them on my own player board. So let me show you player board for a second. Now on a player board, you have a spot to put the different flags, there's six different colored flags. You see I put the purple flag there. You have a spot to put the shields here. You have a spot for your cubes, and you have four workers that you have out here. You also have some influence markers here, and you're going to start the game with three traders. Now, at the end of each scoring round, which is every other round, three, there's six rounds in the game, three scoring rounds, you need to have a shield that blocks this trader. So if I get a purple shield here, at the end of the round, I'll discard them both. I'll discard this guy if I don't get a shield for him, but he's going to make me lose three victory points. So you want to get shields to block these guys. Shields that you don't use will stay there on a future turn. And you'll get three new traders will show up randomly at the end of each round. You also have an apple. Apples are great because they let you change a roll of your die to whatever you want. You also start with three of these merchant uh, Merlin's staffs, which are worth two points at the end of the game, but they let you take a Merlin action twice. The game revolves around these dice. At the beginning of each round, you're going to roll these dice. If you get three of the same number, you'll re-roll. Otherwise, two of the same numbers, fine. You'll put the numbers here. Starting with the player who's first, you're going to take one of your dice and activate it using something on the board. When you use a die, you'll take that die, place it on the board, move your character that many spaces around the board, and take the action of the space that you land on. If you use the Merlin die, you do the same thing, but using the Merlin figure, except he can go in either direction while your character can only go in a clockwise direction. Now, you can use an apple to change a die to whatever you want. You can also use flags. You can spend a flag to manipulate dice sometimes, like this one lets you flip it over to the other side. This one here, after you move, you can use the action of somebody else on the board rather than yourself. Uh, this brown one lets you slide all the way across after moving and take the spot on the other side of the board. So there's various things that you can do. Well, when you land on a spot, you can take the action to that spot. Now there are six principalities here, six regions, and when you land on those, that's pretty cool, you then get to place one of your four workers on a tent there in that area. Now when you place these guys out here, 
when you place your worker, whatever worker you place is what happens. So if I put this guy out, I get a cube. If I put this lady out, I get to place an influence token here. If I put this guy out, I get a flag. And if I put this guy out, I get a shield. Now, if the person you want to use is somewhere else on the board, you can move them to that spot. If someone else is in this spot and you place them there, you just displace it and send it back to that person. So this is what happens when you land on a spot. There are other places where you can get points. So if you look here closely at some of these spots, if I land here, I get a point for every shield that I have. If I land here, um, I get a point for every influence marker I have on the board. Some spots let you trade one for one. Here I can trade a flag for another flag. Some let you, if you have an influence marker, let you put a cube somewhere where that influence, wherever you have an influence marker. Some let you put out manners, and some let you trade cards. Well, what are manners and what are cards? I'll show you. Next to the board, you're going to be building this at the beginning of the game randomly, you're just putting these tiles out between these two scrolls here. Whenever you build a manor, you'll take one of your manors and you place it in a row that includes a cube of the color that you have. So let's say I have a gray cube, I can place a manor here, or I could place it anywhere in these spots here. You then discard it to build the manor. If you build a manor on a tower, you will immediately get to put out an influence marker, take a flag, or a shield of your choice. The other reason you want to place them out here is because in scoring, when you're done with the traders, you'll deal with scoring here. And you'll take a look at each area of the same tile. So these two green tiles are a region. So this player, the green player, is going to get two points. This big blue is five. Green has the most there. They're going to get five points. This mountain region here is worth four because there's four tiles. Yellow has more than red. Yellow will get four points. So that's a way to get a lot of points during scoring. Other ways to get points during scoring is the, each, you're going to get a point for each of these guys you have on the board. Also, you're going to count the number of influence markers in any area. So here, red has two, yellow has one. So red has more, so they'll win. But red is going to get three points, because that's how many influence tokens are there. If, when you're going around the board, you land on Excalibur, you can instantly kill one of your traders. And if all your traders are gone during the scoring, then, and you have Excalibur, you'll get extra three points. If you land on a Holy Grail, you'll take the Holy Grail from whoever has it. You'll get a free apple, which again lets you change your role. And during, when you're scoring these region influence, if it's a tie, you can put it here and say, I win the tie. Now, that's the main ways of scoring. There's going to be three scorings over the game, and in final scoring, apples are worth a point and such. But the other main way of scoring is through mission cards. Each player is going to start the game with four of these cards, and there will be some face up next to the board. On your turn, you can complete one of them if you have whatever it says. So if I have a black and purple shield, I can discard this for two points. I have two orange cubes, two points. I don't actually have to discard the items. I'm sorry. I can keep the items, but I discard the card to show I get the two points. And here I just have to have this guy in the blue area. Here I can have any two people in the purple area. And so you'll note that the cards are going to be one, two, or three points. And if you complete them, you'll get that many points. You can complete one per turn, and you'll take another one as soon as you do so, either from the face-up cards or from the top of the deck. The game also comes with a module that players can play with. In this module, each player has another small board like this right here. And whenever you score a card, let's say I score this card here. This is, I look at the guy down in the corner, it shows the flag guy and two points. Instead of taking the points, I can place one of my tokens either in the one or the two spot of the flag row. So the higher the card, the more choices you have, but you're giving up those points. The top spot in each row gives you an extra victory point in the future whenever you, you score a card of that type. The second row, whenever you go to an area, you can move the guy you place that specific worker to any area and take that action. And then there's a special ability here when you build manners, you can build tw twice. Here, if you get rid of traders, you get extra victory point. Here, uh, you, these, when these give you points, when you land on those spots, it gives you an extra point. And here, you are allowed to place two people out in areas where you have control in, in each of those. So this kind of gives you some extra things to do with your cards. Anyway, after the sixth round, whoever has the most points is the winner of Merlin. Okay, I'm going to start at the very, very end here. And first of all, talk about the module. <laughs> the, the oh, okay, 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 got it. Okay. We're building up to the good stuff. 
I, I just, I, I like the game, I'll say it, but I didn't like that module. It's not that the module was bad, it's just that it didn't add enough to the game to justify the table space and explaining of the rules. Completely superfluous. It's not even like, necessary. I'll discard a card now to possibly get a point on the same cards I'll get in the future, of which I might get two or three, therefore I'm giving up one point to get two or three points. Whoopie do. It's like if, a really convoluted gambling if system. If you're yeah. able to... Yeah, it's exactly what it is. You're, you're just simply gambling. You give up a point now to maybe make two later. Right. I'm good. Unnecessary. Yes, I agree. All right, so anyway, that's out of the way. Well, now we're just talking about the game. Components. Good, bad. Whoosh. They're fine. Oh, we're doing cracked whip with thumbs? Okay. Whoosh. They're... Well, they look like a lot of, they're a lot of clean games. They're regular Eurogame fare. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're pretty but standard. But they're all high quality. They're yeah, not yeah, chintzy. yeah. It's good cardboard. It's good... Uh, the dice are fine. It's all fine. It is not... No, but the one thing Nothing I, stands out I do as like, far as components for like me, though. stickers. Yeah, yeah, stickers. And the cubes, eh. Well, here's what I did like. I liked the player boards and that the shields went on them yes. and the flags connected to them and the yes. traders came in the top. I yes. don't know what it is. There's something about me that's like, ooh, it all connects. Right. It just, yeah. I felt like the player boards, I never got it. It was like, oh, I forgot I had this flag. No, because the flag went in this specific spot. I like the fact that everybody has their own color of dice. You don't have to use all the same color. I like other games do. I like that fact. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's fine. All right, so now talking about the game itself. Mm -hmm. So the game is a giant rondelle, which actually Stefan Feld is not known for. That's more of Matt Gertz thing. Right. But his rondelles are like six spaces usually yeah. or something like that. This one has uh, four times eight, I think 32 spaces. There's a lot of spaces on it. Yeah. 32 sounds right because it makes a perfect thing. That's a lot going on, and yet it's not that complex. I did not feel as to, you looked and said, okay, I can move two. Since your guy can only move clockwise, you would look and say, okay, I can go two, then three, then five, or I'll go five, then two, then three. You know, you had some kind of, some small variations in right. what you did. Right. I think there's what? There's like basically eight different things that you can do, and then there's four variations of those eight things, right? And they're very, very similar, many of them. Yeah. So it's, it's, it sounds a lot more difficult than it actually is. I think you have more options than that, depending on what, what different things you're holding. Oh, you mean once you have the shields and the, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean the flags? Well, if you can flip the die to the other side, there's a whole new option. Or if you have the ability to go backwards or, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, I, I was I talking about the different kinds of things that you're going to land oh, on. Oh, like which things you get. Yes. At first blush, you're like, holy cow, there's so yeah. many things. And no, it's pretty simple. And... I like how the, the people on the map have a picture. The guy thinking, you know, carving a cube. You yeah. don't get confused, but like, what does this guy do That's again? True. He That's gives true. you a cube. Yeah. And so, I'm not sure the theme is super strong, though. It's not. It's. it's I think it's. You, it, you've said that you like this game because of the theme. Oh, well, uh, part, I, partly. Okay. Well, again, it's it's the theme that drew me to it. But you because still I'm, enjoy I'm a sucker it. for the Arthurian legends. And so once that got you in the door, you then went, this is a good game, even though the theme isn't here? The theme is kind of there. The it's theme, not, not the completely The theme gone. is there. It's just not completely integrated. Okay. Okay. Now, I, this is what we call normally a point salad, which means that whatever you do, you get points for. Yeah. And this game has that, not as strong as some games. There's two main ways to get, there's three main ways to get points. Area control on the board, fulfilling mission cards, and then area control on that little sideboard with the manners and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are the three main ways to get points. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a fourth one, and that's having a lot of something and then landing on that space and getting points for Correct. it. But the cards, I think, and this is one of the things that keeps me from saying this game is great. I think it's a very good game. I think the cards can be incredibly lucky. You draw cards, you're like, okay, this is what I'll do. Sure, you can take a turn to switch the cards out if you're near that spot. But for the most part, I'd be like, all right, let's see if I can pull this off. So it didn't give me like a... It has the same feeling as the tickets in Ticket to Ride. That's what those cards feel like to me. Those are different little goals that you're trying to reach for. And I've played the, the games that I've played. Um, there has been times at the end of the game where I've simply, you know, or somebody else in the game have simply just discarded cards to try to draw cards to get some cards that they can score right away. Right. I mean, it has that ticket to ride tickets feel to it. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. 
Except, I, I would argue the difference in tickets, right, is you, at the beginning of the game, you draw some and discard. If I get a ticket that does not work at all, usually I can get rid of it. And, and this, you can do that here. Well, right, but I mean, when I draw them, I draw three and keep one. And this one, sometimes I'm like, well, all right. I'll probably never get a blue shield, but I'll keep it. You never know. You got some face up you can take from. Yeah, that's true. It's the same thing. Right. Than drawing three and keeping one. I guess for me, I like the game a lot, and I like the moving around and getting the points. The missions card for me was one of the weaker parts of the game. Not because I disliked it. I actually thought it was neat that when you, when you play the card, you don't actually give up the resources, but because it wasn't that exciting. Mm. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, I got this stuff, or oh, I didn't get it. I don't know. I didn't find that as exciting as... Um, oh, well, I'm going to try to land in this space that gives me Excalibur to kill something. I'm going to land in this space. I got five flags. I'm going to get five points. I found that part of the game more interesting for me. I, I, I found trying to uh, score uh, multiple uh, two cards at once. Mm. That's, that, that was the fun, one of the fun things for me with those mission cards. Uh, okay, getting getting the uh, gray flag that allows you to score two and gives you a bonus two points on it. Um, you can easily score... Usually not not easily. The it's but I I was regularly scoring seven points uh, every few turns because I was purposefully trying to do that. So hmm. I like using those flags a I guess, lot. I guess the problem that maybe you're having, and I guess I have this this problem a little bit, is that they highlight the pointsality-ness of the whole thing. <laughs> it's like yeah. almost like at the end they're like, uh, we need another way to make points. <laughs> How about you like pick random combinations of stuff the players have and give them some points for it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, have a purple flag and have a black shield. You got that stuff? Here's a point. That's kind of how they feel, you know? Um, which again, doesn't help the theme. Like what, what does that mean? Yeah, but why should you care? You don't even like the, th you don't care about theme. That's oh, true, but this snap. compounds the problem of like it feeling like just a random point salad. The other stuff, I can kind of justify with the theme. It's like, oh, you make points over here because you defended against this guy who's coming in and attacking you. So you don't lose the three points. Okay, I can, I'll buy into that. But this card is just a random assortment of things you own at any given moment, and you can then cash it in and get points. It's just more points, you know? I don't even mind that in, in games, but in this one, it's like that last thing that makes me feel like, enough with the one, two, three points for everything, you know? Everything is one, two, or three points. So to clarify, you're not as big of a fan of the game. I'm not a fan of it. I um, That needed clarification. Well, I, I think the game is... Spell it out. <laughs> it's fine. It is another euro. And I don't even mean that to be, like, dismissive. Certainly this feels like, like no, I mean, I don't mean, <laughs> I could trash the game, right? But yeah. I'm not saying that because it, but here's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't provoke a strong emotional reaction in me. That's why I'm not trashing it because I'm just like, oh, it's another one of these games. It's another Euro game. Okay, that's yeah. everything. I think that's a reasonable thing. That's everything that this game makes me feel. I push some stuff around, I get points, that can be fun sometimes, sometimes it's not. I can't put my finger on why, maybe some came earlier and they get a pass, right? Maybe that's it. And the new ones need to be better. Maybe that's it, I don't know. This one is just one of the other ones. I felt like I played this before I played. Well, so I'm assuming at this point you're like giving it a sideways thumb then? It's going to be a little lower than that. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, for me, I like it. Now, I don't... Maybe I'm like, not, but I cut the thumb off. Oh, that's gross. I'm not sure I, I like it as much as Sam does. I think this game is fine. There's a lot of randomness in the dice rolling and in the card draws and in the way the board is set up and all that jazz. But I think that's mitigated by a lot of the things you can do. The game gets more interesting as it goes along once you get more flags and you have more opportunities, although it's kind of an interesting thing. You want to start using these flags, but at the same time you want to keep them. So there's kind of that cross there. You want to keep a pile of cubes, but you want to use them to build the manners. I think it's a solid game. I, I, I initially was like, oh, this is better than Bruges. As time goes by, Bruges is better for me. But they're in that same category. I think if you like Bruges, you'll like Merlin. Um, not because... They're similar games, but they're that similar weight, and they both have different ways to get points. Um, Bruges is all about manipulating cards. Merlin's about manipulating dice. So if you like the card aspect better, this one doesn't have, I mean, it has that typical Feldian thing. 
in which he's like, hey, something bad's going to happen to you unless you stop it. And then this time it's yeah. the traders. Yeah. But at least the traders are very stoppable for the most part. If you let multiple get through, it basically means you just weren't trying to stop them that hard. Because you, you really can. You can get to the sh at least a couple shields you it's want. It's possible for you, to, for you to get stacked up with a stack of like two traders. And it's difficult to get two of one kind, especially if the dice aren't helping. True, but Excalibur, oh no, but that one flag lets you kill a stack of traders for that reason. Correct, but you have to make sure you get to that flag, which again, you could be restricted from doing if the dice don't roll for you correctly, and you're not able to get some of those flags that help you manipulate those dice. So again, it's almost like a perfect storm type of thing, but I have seen that happen. Uh, where where people were getting hit by those traders pretty hard. Well, I'll toss it to Sam, but before I do, I will give this one solid ugly Merlin staff up, because apparently he likes to use evil-looking staffs. Yes. Those are um, hilarious. But I, totally. for the king's favor, I'm gonna, that's a big thumb down. That's a waste of time. But the rest of it, I like. <laughs> I like how it looks. I like that it plays. <laughs> I have enjoyed it. I think it scales well. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't like it as much as me, right? I like it better than both of you put together, almost. Because well, that's not hard. It's like zero plus one. I know, Come on. exactly, right? <laughs> so uh, I, mean, I, I like the different there. aspects of the game. Point I like two. the Point I like two. the fact that each of the different kinds of points gathering things that are in the game they feel balanced uh i've played a game where i completely neglected building manners and all the points that that can give you uh and i still tied with the person uh that threw all of his eggs in that manner basket oh yeah no tiebreakers so yeah that's true that is true now will you please stop right. no Thank tolerance you. for that sort of nonsense um so okay. there there is that um i like how you can get points from using all of your people uh using all of your workers making sure that uh all of your influence tokens are out there you can get a lot of points with that there's a lot of different ways about the uh, that that the that you can get points in the game that are all balanced and they all feel fun it's not like, well, I'm not having as much fun as he is, but I'm still getting as many points as he is. No, uh, they're, they're both on the same interesting level, and I like that. I, I've said elsewhere that I like the fact that they've taken what I consider an old busted mechanism of roll and move, and they've breathed new life into it because you're not just rolling one die and then moving along this track. You're rolling three different dice. Uh, and then one more for, for being able to move Merlin around. And then you can manipulate the face that the die has. You can manipulate the direction in which you move. There's a lot of different ways that you can get around that restrictive roll and move mechanism. So I like that. I like there's that uh, it is a, a family level uh, Euro game. It's not a difficult game to teach. Uh, Z was saying that it's just another Euro game and and sometimes people think another Euro game that means it's going to be heavy and dry. That's not where this game is. So while I'm not disagreeing with him that this is just another Euro game, I think that this is one that will appeal to a large audience of people, yeah. which some Euro games just can't say because they're too heavy. So uh, yeah, I was drawn in by the theme at first, but uh, the mechanisms, the way the board looks, uh, the color, all, everything made me want to stay. So I'm gonna give this one two thumbs up for me. I think it's a great game. I think Feld and Reineck is a great combination as far as designers go. So uh, that's um, me for Merlin. Cool, cool. There you go. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Z Garcia, thank you. And I am Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. The wizard. <laughs> Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>